Hello and welcome to part three of painting the copperhead course. Last week in part two I worked on detail in the trees and this week we finished the painting. Follow along and I'm going to walk you through the steps to get from here to the finished painting. If you're new to my channel, my name is Stoof. I am a fine artist from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I focus on realism landscape paintings. And this year I have a goal to paint 50 different golf courses. This is golf course number 12. Here I am still working on touching up those trees and adding some detail. I'm using a fine liner brush and I thin down my paint using a safer uh, paint thinner than mineral spirits. I used to use mineral spirits but it started to give me a reaction uh, in my lungs. I was having a really painful chest uh, whenever I would use paint thinner so I stopped using that and I switched to uh, it's called milk paint citrus solvents and it works the same way as mineral spirits works it thins down your oil paint and it is actually made from orange peels so it does not bother your lungs uh, so I've linked that in my description below I definitely recommend using that as a safer alternative to mineral spirits or turpentine There's a bit of a glare here. The light behind my camera reflects off of the wet oil paint, so I'm using darker shades here. I'm using sap green, phthalo blue, raw umber, some burnt sienna, some yellow ochre, very uh, natural, earthy color tones, and uh, you can't tell quite exactly the color I'm using because of that reflection, but as that paint dries uh, later on in the video, you'll be able to see the nice detail that I put into those trees. Landscape painting is very repetitive. You have a lot of trees and you have a lot of grass, so you're going to be using the same techniques over and over. I do a lot of layering with my paint. I usually start with the shadow tones, so that's why my paintings appear darker at first, and then I go back in and add the highlights where the sun is reflecting off the leaves, and we get that bright, vibrant green color. I also try to use a different blend of uh, browns and reds and blues mixed in with my green to uh, play around with the warmth of the trees. I don't want all of my trees just to be green or else they're going to look flat. You want to have a little bit of variation in color in your trees so you can tell where one tree starts and the tree behind it starts. Once I got more detail on the trees on the left side, I added some more vibrant bright green onto my fairway of the golf course. This was a blend of, I believe, a cadmium yellow medium tone with a little bit more of an orangish uh, tone to it and my phthalo blue. I may have also used a little bit of phthalo green. Mixing phthalo green with Cadmium yellow gives you a really nice springtime vibrant green. So I use some of that on my fairway as well for where the light is really hitting that fairway. And I'm starting to outline the sand traps. Working on the sand traps is always my favorite part of a golf course. I just love the different unique shapes they have and the shadows that they create based on where the sun is 
and they actually have a little little bit of color in them too so depending on uh, what the sand is like if you have more of like a core iron in it then you're gonna have more reddish brown sand traps or if you're gonna have more like these guys these sand traps have a little bit more quartz in them so they're more white but they still have those nice purple shadows and little hints of uh, brown where the sprinklers got them and they're still a little bit wet so I, I really like to paint the sand traps Now I'm working on some of the shadows and the background. I wanted the sun to be behind the viewer on the left hand side, so all of our shadows are going to be at an angle using those rules based on where the sun is. Shadows are going to be basically to the right, but more at a diagonal farther away from us. Here I'm starting to add some highlights in the sand trap where the sun is really hitting that nice uh, quartzy sand. This course has lots of sand traps. I'm sure I would be hitting many of them if I were to be playing this course. <laughs> I tend to go wherever the hazards are when I'm playing, so... <laughs> and we have the cart path up in the back right. It's a nice cart path that just kind of follows the landscape there. It has a nice little curvy shape. And we have some trees in the back right. I'm going to work on getting those detailed as well. Again, using a mix of cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, sap green, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, a little bit of reds. It's a nice blend of colors. And the way the sun is hitting this area, these trees are all going to have nice bright highlights. Another thing you might notice is that the trees are getting larger as they move closer to us and that is something that we would perceive in nature looking out farther away from us. The trees that are about the same height are going to look much smaller farther away than they would up close. So that's why the trees up close are about twice as large as the trees that are right back in front and behind of those buildings. Here I'm working on the rough grass and the edges of my sand traps. I really struggled with the rough grass here. I was trying to take a faster way out, I think, and just trying to get highlight shadow, crisscross pattern for the grass cut, and then see if that was enough. But I didn't think that was enough. It just wasn't giving me the texture that I wanted. And you'll see at the end, I go back in and I'll put individual blades of grass in there. We can see the sun hitting those little blades of grass. We have a nice line on the edge of our fairway that separates the fairway from the rough and I wanted to make that nice and visible in my painting and that line for the fairway there's like a highlight on the front of it and then a little shadow at the edge of it where it meets the rough so I wanted that line to get thinner as it got farther away from us so that we can tell that that is going farther out into the distance. And now we're working on those sand traps again. As I mentioned before, we have a little bit of browns in there where the sand traps are still a bit wet from the sprinklers, possibly. Or there's just a little shadow from the uh, sand traps being uh, raked. The sand traps are appeared to be kept in very pristine condition. They were 
well raked at all times with those nice lines going across the sand traps. I'm just repeating that process of working on highlights and shadows on my grass. Lots of layering. Alright, so now I'm working on the lines on the fairway. So this is where they cut the grass in a nice pattern to give golf courses that gorgeous crisscross uh, pattern on the fairways. So we're going to have two perspective points here. We're going to have one for where all of the lines going parallel to the fairway are hitting a spot and that is that little point that I showed you in that upper left uh, on top of that building in the foreground there behind the red flowers and then we're gonna have another one that goes perpendicular to that line and th that one is going to be farther off it's gonna be off the canvas on the right side and all of those lines want to reach that point so we have two little perspective points we basically want all of our lines to match up to there so that we can accurately portray the distance and the right shape for these lines our lines are gonna get closer together the farther back we're getting so we can tell that we're looking off into the distance So here I'm playing around with the highlights and the shadows, figuring out what part of my crisscross pattern I want to be dark and how dark I want it to be. And then I'm going back in with some highlights. My personal opinion is that adding these grass cut lines to your fairway really add to a golf course painting. They just make the painting look complete. The, you know, it's not just grass with no texture on it. Like now we can, we can tell that this is a nice cut grass on the course, not just like a solid color. Adding the crisscross grass cut lines to the fairway differs with every painting. Your perspective points are going to be in different spots depending on the angle of the fairway. So this fairway is going uphill, so it's a little bit different. The angle is starting off on the left and coming into the center. Depends on where your fairway is that you're painting. So just keep in mind where your perspective points are going to be and where you're going to be painting your angles to get those uh, grass cut lines accurate. And now I'm playing around with the rough grass again to the right of the bunkers there. This uh, is another layer of highlights that I'm throwing on there. It still doesn't quite pop the way I want it to, so I'll continue to work on that. And at this point I'm just touching up little details all over the painting and finishing up any little spots that needed some attention. I'm adding the flag pin with the little red flag on the green, but you can't really tell from the camera distance. Uh, it's, it's really tiny, so you'll see it at the end here shortly. And I'm still playing with the grass here. I'm trying to get that crisscross line. I told you guys I really overdid it with the grass here. <laughs> But just wait and see the finished product coming soon. It turned out pretty nice uh, the way I finished it up, so keep watching. Okay, so this painting is now complete for purposes of 
this video, I still have to send this to the client and make sure they don't have any additional changes they want to make. And if they do, I'll make some uh, adjustments, but uh, for this video, I'm calling this one done. Uh, thanks for watching. I ended up touching up the grass and fixing that off camera because my computer is running out of storage space so I can't add any more video to edit. <laughs> so uh, I really just overcomplicated things with the grass. I was trying to do the crisscross pattern to show where the grass was cut and it ended up not giving the grass enough texture. It looked just like a crisscross pattern without any blades of grass sticking up. So I ended up going back and using a uh, flat brush and just individually going in and throwing some lines for the shadows and then the highlights where the little blades of grass are hitting there. So we still see our grass cut lines uh, here and here. Uh, and we also have that texture that I want to show the rough part of the grass. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post weekly painting videos every Thursday. If you want to commission your own painting from me, you can go on my website, thepaintingstoof.com, and click on the Commissions tab. I have that linked in the description below for you. I'd love to make you a painting.